everyone and welcome back to my channel. We're down here in my craft room where I just recently cleaned up my entire card making desk. I had been doing a lot of card card making and I just decided to clean everything up and as I was doing it I realized I haven't done a video in a while where I kind of show my immediate craft desk and the things that I have in front of me to kind of help me work better. I did a big tour of my craft room and kind of touched on some things, but I thought I'd kind of take a deep dive into my craft desk. And, you know, I like to see videos like this and how other people kind of arrange their things on their desk, um, because sometimes I can get ideas on how to better organize myself. So hopefully you can get some ideas on, um, on how I kind of organize my desk and get some ideas for yourself. So let me kind of pan out and just kind of show you the desk itself. Uh, this is, I actually, I have two desks in my craft room. This is, uh, my older desk. This was from the Martha Stewart craft collection, which they don't make anymore. I, they used to have it at this website called home decorators, which I don't even think that exists anymore. And then I think the line moved over to home Depot. Um, but I, I can't find it anymore. So, but it's basically a countertop height desk, which is what I like for working. Um, I don't, I try not to sit too much when I'm in my craft room because I want to walk around and easily grab what I need. So this type of uh, countertop height desk works for me. I think it's like 36 inches high or something like that. So I do have a foldable Ikea bar stool that I use if I'm sitting and, and coloring with Copics or something for a long period of time. But for the most part, I'm standing when I'm doing my, my crafting. So on the top of the desk, I have it covered with a couple of different types of mats. Uh, I really like these mats from American Crafts. They're a, a self-healing cutting mat, and they kind of just a soft, uh, flexible, um, I don't know which, but it's made of really like a plastic rubbery feel. Um, and it's got the grid lines on it too, which I like. And I like the color. Um, I do have another one that's pink, and I think you can find, I'll, I'll see what I can find on Amazon. That's where I got these. Um, they do have them in pink, but I, of course, like the mint green color. So I, I have, this is the smaller version. And then I also have one underneath this glass mat here that I use when I'm filming so there's no glare. And this is the bigger, the bigger one right here. So this is really big. And then normally when I'm crafting, I keep this We Are Memory Keepers glass media mat on top because it can easily wipe, you can wipe spills and ink away and it uh, doesn't make a mess. Otherwise, I had one of these mats before and it just, it was getting ink all over it and then you end up transferring the ink onto your cards and that's not always good. So, so I keep the glass mat up here when I'm working and it works really well for me. A uh, long time ago, I used to have a lot more stuff on my desk. I had a couple of Ot light lamps that I would use to, you know, shed some more light on the work I was doing. I ended up changing over. I watched a lot of different videos to kind of see what people were using. And I recently, I think this is in the past year, I settled on this ring light and I really like it. It, I have it attached. It's on a, a tripod. It actually came with a tripod and it's in the back of my desk and it's very tall. So you can kind of raise it and lower it. And then I bought the extra little uh, flexible neck that you can attach the lamp to too so that I can kind of uh, make adjustments to the lamp over my desk as I need it and this sheds a lot of light and you can use cooler or warmer light depending on what you're needing and I find that that frees up my desk from lamps and things like that where I don't have to worry about those things getting in the way and it's great for filming too because it's the perfect amount of light um, for filming and right underneath this I have my an Ar Archon uh, phone mount and I think a lot of people have these it's just a adjustable arm that you can attach your phone uh, for to do video film videos or take photos above your desk and so this works really well too so I have this right underneath here and then the light shines down and then I get the perfect amount of light for my videos so no other lamps than that. That works really well. And then I have overhead lighting in my craft room too. So that can, that also helps. And then over here I have my, uh, cutter. This is just a, a Fiskars cutter with the little, uh, it has a little, uh, string guide here that I really like to, to cut straight 
pieces of paper and it has an arm that comes out and it uh, goes out to 12 inches. So you can, uh, actually it goes out to 14 inches. So you can use it for uh, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper too. So I keep that right next to me because I use that all the time. And then in the front, I have, um, well, we'll start over here. This is an old little uh, card catalog uh, cabinet I got from Michael's a really long time ago. It's just like a little drawer set. And on the top, I keep, um, these are things I reach for all the time. Um, different types of erasers. So I have, this is just a white eraser. I have an adhesive remover eraser. This is really helpful if you get extra tape runner on your cards or projects and you want to just kind of erase it off. I also have a sanding block, which this really comes in handy for lots of things. You can sand off uh, ink mistakes that you make on your cards, kind of it can erase ink. Um, sand the sides of cards, maybe if there's a little jagged edge. Um, this is really helpful too. It's kind of a just a fine grit. And this came in a pack of six or something, and I'm still on the first one, so um, this lasts a while. And then I have it's just some. These are some uh, tweezers to use for like little sequins and things like that. And then just a couple little odds and ends. Oh, this is a sanding eraser. These are really good too for getting off um, erasing ink from cards. Um, I usually use this hand in hand with the sanding block too, and this can can save you if you just get if you get like a little ink smudge on your cards. It's the worst thing, but those will really help you get them off. And then I just have some couple little odds and ends. I have some. Oh, this is my uh, little wrench for adjusting my uh, Sizzix Big Shot. Sometimes they, the arm gets loose, so I have to tighten it. So I've got that there. So that's in that drawer. And then down here are all of my different glue dot sizes. I love glue dots for attaching um, little embellishments, sequins, enamel dots. I always put a glue dot on the back of an enamel dot. I don't trust the uh, adhesive that it comes with because it can dry out and then your dots will pop off. So I always use these little tiny, these are the micro dots. They're very tiny. You can see. I don't know if you can see up close how little they are. These are great. And then I have all different sizes because I think um, you kind of need all sizes of these glue dots. They all come in handy. These are the 3D ones that have a little bit of a dimension to them. And these are nice too if you want to pop something up, but you want it to be clear. Um, so that's pretty much everything I have here. And then over here is my are my Copics. And I have a whole separate video about choosing Copics. Um, if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to it. But um, this is my... Uh, Basically, the this and my uh, watercolor brush markers, which I'll show you in a second, are the only type of kind of mixed media item I use. I do use pastes sometimes too, um, but mainly for coloring. Um, I just I really love Copics. It's just kind of my my thing. I think because they're so precise, you can just you get the the really nice bright color, and um, it's easy to stay in the lines with them. So that's why I like the Copics. So I have them kind of arranged in rainbow order. This uh, container was from Organize More. They have a newer version of it um, that you can uh, purchase online, which I'll include a link to. But I just kind of arranged all my colors in alphabetical order, or not alphabetical, alphabetical order, rainbow order, but according to the kind of letter code on here. So the RVs are here, the regular Rs, it kind of goes like that. Um, and then I have all my neutrals down here. And then these are my little accent pens, uh, the Spectrum Noir uh, glitter pens, which I like to use as kind of an overlay on my Copics. It gives a little bit of a shimmer. I've got some uh, Wink of Stella pens too, which are kind of the same thing, but I've got a variety of colors of those. Um, those are really nice. And then on top of this, because um, I like to also, um, organize up so use any type of any kind of vertical space I can have um, this is about as high up as I can go but um, this still this works pretty well I have let me start over here I have this little basket with my uh, stamp tabulous um, tool this is to use with like your misty or any type of stamping platform and when you uh, put the platform down with your ink and your stamp you can kind of 
move this along on top to really get a good imprint with your stamp. This is helpful. It's just kind of ergonomically correct. It's got the little knob on top that you can use your hand to kind of um, move it around to get to get a perfect print with your um, with your ink. So I've got that in this basket. I also have just a variety of sizes of acrylic blocks for my stamps, my acrylic stamps. So these are handy right here. And then next to this, I have this container that I got from Amazon. It's really helpful. You can also uh, attach it to the wall too. You can have it kind of facing out. Um, but this it works really well sitting on top of here and then these are my tools that i reach for most often so i have my um, small scissors i have I, my other pair of scissors over on the other table but i have my little cutter bee scissors usually in here and then i have these just to cut small little pieces i have a couple of different types of liquid glue all of my tape runners i just pop right in here um i forget what i'm so, oh, I have tweezers in here, but I'm actually working on some beading projects over on the other side. So I grab those. And then um, this is just kind of a variety of different tools. I have my little pokey tool thing. Um, I've got another little tool like that. Um, some brushes. I use a big fluffy brush like this to, to brush off glitter if it gets on a card. Um, Crystal Katana, this helps to put little jewels on cards. A um, couple of bone folders, um, a pencil. So just some like, just tools that I, I, I'm always looking for. I just kind of keep in this little cluster. And then over here I have my larger scissors. This is, um, these are the Tim Holtz uh, nonstick scissors. I have them in two different sizes. And then my, um, these are uh, black liner pens. I like to use these for correcting mistakes when I stamp with black ink. So if maybe the stamp kind of missed a spot, you can take one of these thin black pens and they're different size tips, um, depending on what size you need. And you can kind of go over the line, the black line with your ink and it corrects um, any stamping mistakes. So it's kind of nice too. And then in this little area I just have this is a white um artist pen I, I I oh I use this for like little accents on Copic coloring you know to make the little shiny marks so a couple of different types of uh pens here and then there's some glue pens too so I have my um quickie quickie glue glue pen and then another glue pen here and then another a couple of white markers here so that's everything up there. Oh, and then I have, this is my favorite tool. I always talk about this. <laughs> this is my Spellbinders main attraction. This is for, um, it's, there's a magnet on this side and you can use it to uh, put your, hold your dies while you're using them. So if you have like a set of heart nesting dies or something and you, you're you using all of them, you can, uh, uh, they, they're, metal so they're um, attracted to this because it's a magnet on top and you can keep them safe um, on this thing so that they don't get lost on your table so and it's cute too because it's shaped like a diamond so I just have this up here as decoration and then it's also very useful and then over here I have another kind of contraption that I <laughs> that I made up from some plastic sterilite drawers and another Michael's um, older Michael's uh, little storage shelf um, but I keep my this is my large uh, heavy duty glue glider pro this so this is a, a tape runner but it's like a stronger tape runner and um, it's so big but so I just keep it right in here so I can grab for it and then these are my zig clean color brush pens which I love working with you feel like a watercolor artist but it's again it's easy to stay in the lines with these um, you can use them with or without water so I've used them both ways, but I like to add a little bit of water and then kind of brush these on and the marker um, just kind of blends in really nicely with the water. So you get a watercolor um, effect on your uh, stamped images, which is really nice. So these are great for florals. So I use these quite a bit. So I just kind of make that little basket of drawer like that. And then this is just, this drawer has um, different types of pens, felt tip tap pens that I'll reach for to maybe do some journaling or something like that. So 
I just like to keep these handy. These Sharpie pens are really nice. They're super fine tipped permanent uh, markers. These are great to use um, for, you know, if you want permanent writing on something. So I have those in a whole bunch of colors. And then this little um, uh, tourney shelf thing, <laughs> I don't know what you call it. It I got it from uh, scrapbook.com and it's great for my uh, embossing pastes, which I use with my uh, stencils. And then on top, I keep all of my Nouveau drops organized by rainbow colors. So it's, they're fun to look at because they're so colorful and pretty, but then it's also useful because I can kind of see what I have and reach for it when I want to use, I, I would use these instead of enamel dots because you can kind of um, make a variety of sizes because you know, you're in charge of how big you um, make the drops when you squeeze them out. So it's kind of nice to, to use these sometimes too, instead of enamel dots. So um, that's everything on top of my desk. Um, I guess, let me show you what is in my desk. So again, I like to keep everything that I use all the time handy. So, and this desk is mostly just for kind of card making type stuff. So that's what you're gonna find in the drawers too. So I have all of my um, foam dots here, different sizes of foam dots in this little, um, just a little it's just a cardboard box here. Um, I also have just a variety of ink pens, um, whatever I need. Um, you know, if I'm needing a pen to write something down, I just have that in here. I've got my tape. I have my tiny attacher stapler with a bunch of different types of staples in the back here. Um, oh, this uh, post-it tape is really handy too. I use this to uh, make lines like if I'm, I'm doing ink blending I can ink blend stripes by using different sizes of post-it tape so it's kind of like it's like painters tape it doesn't stick to your project and it peels away so you can use it as masking so I have this larger size and then I have a smaller narrower size too so these are nice and then I have um, just this is like a score tape and then this is just an old uh, roll of washi tape that I can use to attach things, um, dies to my uh, cardstock when I'm running it through my die cutting machine. And again, the washi tape doesn't stick to your project. So it keeps everything down. Um, I have a glue stick. Sometimes I will use this for, for my journals. So I just have that handy. This glue sponge is really interesting. Um, it's just another way to adhere something. Um, it's basically just a sponge that has glue on it, but you can like you can tap like an embellishment or something and it gets glue evenly all on the back of it and then you can um, lay it on your project. So this is kind of nice to have. You can kind of see the glue on the bottom there. And then I have a whole bunch of different uh, little notepads and things if I want to jot down some notes. Over here are my grids for my Misty. I got these from Tailored Expressions. These are really handy for lining up uh, stamps and sentiment stamps on your Misty. So it's got the different sizes depending on the size card you're using and there's also a blank one um, that can, can be useful as well. Here's a really big one too. So I keep those handy. I also have kind of little cheat sheets in here for if I'm making um, like a slimline card if I want to know the measurements for that. I've got my happy planner, the size of that. So if I want to cut down pages for that, I, I have those measurements handy. Um, you know, different size cards, A7 cards. I always forget what size those are. So I always, I just write it down on a little cheat sheet. Four bar cards. So I've got those handy because I like to make different sizes of, of cards too, greeting cards. Um, so that's everything in here. And then let me show you. This is all basically my um, inks that I use all the time. So I've got my Versamark ink. So this is the clear sticky ink that you would use for heat embossing or watermarking. I also have a Versamark Dazzle. Um, this has a little bit of shimmer to it. So um, you, you would notice this more probably if you were just doing a watermark. Um, so that's always nice. Um, just different kinds of them. Oh, and an embossing pen too. This is a Versamarker pen, so you can use that the same way as the 
the Versamark ink. Only I also have my little magic powder bag here that I like to keep handy um, because before I do heat embossing, I always run this over the top of my card before I stamp the Versamark ink, and that keeps the embossing powder from sticking to the parts of the card that you don't want it to. So that's really helpful too. I also have a variety of black inks that I like to keep handy. I have this VersaFine uh, Onyx Black Ink. This is uh, kind of a hybrid ink. It's a pigment ink and it's fast drying. So it's really good for uh, heat embossing with clear embossing powder. It's also just really good for sentiments too. It gives you a really crisp image with your sentiments. There's no kind of like fuzzy lines uh, on the sentiment, so I really like that ink. Um, I also like to use this Hero Arts Black Dye Ink. This is just a really nice regular ink for sentiments as well. And then of course, Memento Ink, which is great for using with Copic coloring. And oh, I forgot to mention too, the, the VersaFine as well as the, the Black Dye Ink are really good with watercolor. So you can use that with the painting or with the Zig uh, brush pens too. I also have this Brilliance Black Pigment Ink Pad, and Brilliance is kind of like a shimmery ink, and it's kind of nice to use if you want something a little different, um, like with your when you're stamping a sentiment, if you want a little bit of a shimmer. It's very subtle. You, it, you can't really see it that well. Um, you have to look up close, but some it's something a little bit different, so these are kind of nice. They actually come in a lot of different colors, too, and I, I have a few of the colors as well. Oh, and I have this. This is a little trick I learned from, I can't remember who I learned it from, um, but I keep these old enamel dots in this little uh, plastic bag. I'm missing a couple, but they're different sizes. And I don't know if you've ever put enamel dots on your card or your project and you, you don't like the way they look. This is a way to practice ahead of time and um, kind of place your dots and then you can decide if you like them or not. So there was actually, I had a even smaller dot here, but I took all the stickiness off the back of the dots and I just leave these and I'll arrange them on my card where I wanna put enamel dots and then kind of try different configurations until I'm happy with it. Then I replace these with the enamel dots that I'm gonna use and it works out great and you don't make a bunch of mistakes and you don't have to move your enamel dots all the time. So it's nice to just have these, these stand-ins um, for your your placement. My stamp -a jig for my wooden stamps. I also have my Wendy Vecchi uh, stamping tool for wooden stamps. It kind of works the same way. I have my stamp scrubber. This is uh, it has it's two sided. It has um, kind of a felt pieces on either side, and you use this stamp cleaner. You spray it on one side, rub your stamps on it and then dry them off on this side, and it's really handy with that. Um, I also have a couple of, I have a, a gray, kind of a grayish ink, because sometimes I use this for um, stamping the backs of my cards with the handmade stamp. Um, what else? Some silver ink too, and some um, white ink. So just kind of like basic, um, you know, neutral colors that I would use on cards for different things. And then I have a couple different stamping platforms in here too. Um, this was the old Tim Holtz. I don't think they make this anymore. Um, and then one from We Are Memory Keepers. So I always like to try all the different stamping platforms, um, but I usually just use my Misty. So, so that's everything in this drawer. Um, oh, and I also have probably seen this before. My Lawn Fawn Chamois. This is another type of stamp cleaner. This is the holder. So I keep the, this actually isn't a Lawn Fawn one, but, but this is the, this is from Lawn Fawn. It holds the chamois. But I get these chamois from um, Amazon and I just cut them apart. And these are great for cleaning stamps too. So you just wet them with some water and they kind of soften up and then you can wipe your stamps clean and then they work really, really great. And then let's see, I guess that's everything in here. And I can just show you what I have. I've, I've shown this before too. This is a um, kind of a stackable little metal uh, container that I got from Home Goods a really long time ago. And this is where I keep the new stamps that I buy that I haven't had a chance to try yet. And I wanna be sure that I don't forget to use them. So I always put them right in here. Um, I'll also, 
set up some projects too. If I, if I have a few different types of stamps I'm using on some greeting cards, I'll keep those in here too, just to keep them handy um, because I'm using them. So um, I've got more <laughs> stamps I need to get to to make some cards, but I have a lot of cards to make because I'm going to be working on some um, craft show projects coming up soon. So, so that's everything on my craft desk. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll, I'll put links to everything that um, you see on top of the desk. Um, but again, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, like I said, this is just, I haven't changed much on the top of this desk. Um, this has been working for me for many years. Um, my whole philosophy is just keep things within arm's reach so you can work quickly and it won't, you, so you don't have to take a lot of steps to, to dig and find things. So keep your most used tools and things right in front of you so that you can reach for them. And um, even if you just have a little basket and you just have stuff right in front of you, just keep your memento ink, keep your scissors that you use all the time, um, your stamping block, just keep everything right there and it'll, it'll make your uh, projects go faster and then you'll be able to create more. So thanks again for watching today and I will see you in my next video.